Still spending it all though. <laughs> Fourteen point something. Uh, might as well rip, rip it away. Those for sure numbers. Eight to six. Who's counting numbers? <laughs> it's called to order the meeting of the budget advisory committee today at, at two o'clock. Um, do we have a quorum? We do. We do. Roll call. Chair McCloy. Here. Mrs. Hall. Here. Mr. Bergeman is not here yet. Ms. Ingalls is not here yet. Ms. Major? Here. Ms. Howard? Here. Okay. Sole purpose of being here, we're looking at the 2023 budget, uh, starting by departments. So let's lead it off. I'll turn it over to you, Ron. And well, we got Bob with Project Administration here to deliver on his uh, his budget. Thanks, Ron, Mr. Chair. Glad to be back in front of you all again. Good seeing you again. Thank you. Uh, I'm Bob Robertson. I'm the Project Administration Department Director. And in a few sentences, what the Project Administration Department is, is basically the de facto engineering department for the city. We do what our title says. We administer projects. Uh, we run them through design and through construction. We're a small department of three people, including me, um, and I, we share an executive assistant, so I guess three and a half, technically. Um, most of our work comes from one of three places. It's either water and sewer, it's either stormwater, or it's general fund. And the proportion of our salaries are split accordingly, approximately, to the ratio of the work that we do in each of those departments. Um, as a small department, um, my, my budget consists of basically two things, the salaries for the three people that I have in my department and a fund for miscellaneous engineering services that um, is basically a tool that I use for um, uh, analysis, miscellaneous non-project related engineering work. It's also for um, geotechnical work. If we have a, a sinkhole or something opens up, I have a contract available and I take care of that under my budget. So if we have uh, an investigation needs to be done, we do that. And uh, miscellaneous surveying services for the departments if they need, if they need to go you know, get the, a boundary survey for a property they're interested in, I have the ability and the contracts available to, to execute those. So that's what that budget line item is for. Uh, my total budget is 502,000, which is about well, almost exactly 4% more than last year. So um, really just a um, barely an inflationary adjustment over last year's budget. And uh, I think with that, I'll just stop for questions, Mr. Chair. Any questions? It, overall, is, is that what we're going to see in most budgets in terms of salaries or total, I'm going to call it salaries and benefits, about a 4% increase? That, that's about it, and that's what combined, that's the 3% that we budget for a funding for a pay increase. And then we've still got, we don't, do not have the health insurance numbers, what the premium gonna come in at. So we budgeted 10% for that. So yes, it's right around 4% there. Okay, right. And Don't the other I thing, and pretty much through that. some of the other things you might see across the departments is, you know, some operating supplies, you know, costs have gone up, especially, you know, fuel, vehicle fuel and repairs and maintenance. So you'll see that across some of the departments. And I just wanted to mention one thing, you know, Bob's one of the departments where all his employees are, are split across three different departments. So if you're looking at his payroll schedule, he's going to be in three different pages of the budget if you right. try to figure out. We have something in this nice little book, which, which we're very proud of. You know, she's, oops, sorry, <laughs> Shane and I put it together. And it's award winning. <laughs> oh, yes, it's award winning. It's a great book. And I, we I, have I, some pages, like, like pages... Um, 40, start with page, well, Bob and him are on page 44, which totals those three different departments. So if you needed to see the total of all the split positions, we've got pages um, 42 through 44 of this budget book show that it kind of combines those split positions across the different yeah. funds and stuff. That's real information. I'm still using the detail. I needed it. But you can do that. I'll give it its due justice okay. in time. But about a 4%. Yes. And so you don't believe the inflation is transitory? It transitioned somewhere. <laughs> okay. 
It hasn't gone away. Bear with us just a sec. Hey, no, no problem. That's what I get for being first, right? Get everybody warmed up and ready. What do they call it? The opening act? Is that it? Yeah. Like I said, I don't know if you, you should have this sheet which shows the page numbers of the different budget books I where, do. where their departments are. So. And that's where I'm jumping around a little bit. When you said you're jumping around, I'm jump. I'm clear back on 286. Yeah, and then the other 33 would be. Uh, under office supplies, have, there's, there's a two be two budget books. There's a detail one, and this one's one we just put together. We call our what's really the actual annual budget book. But. They're just intentionally trying to confuse newbies. No, I'm kidding. That's okay. That's okay. You it's were there once, Claire. A little levity. <laughs> yeah, I was there once, a long time ago. Um, Bob, question, and I'm looking yes. in the detail. Uh, and I'm just trying to look at the highlights of those numbers. I know why personnel services is a uh, office supplies moving from 2,800 to Eight thousand seven hundred fifty. Mm -hmm. Let's see some of the good part of that's due to three new computers. It's almost all of it. Yes. And Claire, just so the committee knows, what we've we changed our capitalization threshold from a thousand dollars to five thousand dollars. So now you're going to see some items that used to be under capital that are now, now under point fifty two operating supplies. Example, computer. Computers. It doesn't meet the five thousand you expense it out. Right. We moved five thousands. It used to be good, under a good reasonable head. Yeah. It used to be under a capital line item, but now it's under operating supplies. Makes it's a logical policy. Five thousand. A thousand, you start to get down. Into yeah, we're following the state guidelines with that. That, yeah. Then to complement the state, they came up with the reason. I'll reach that. out to them, tell them that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Bear with me. Pretty big jump in books and publications going from. Uh, $2,000 uh, 22 budget up to $8,000. I won't answer my own question. You, I'll let it, leave it to you, Bob. All right. So I think that's see. training. Yeah. Uh, did I miss a line? That's why I bought Brett this. Yeah. It is training. So that's line. That is correct. 55. So that is classes, seminars, licensing, and training. A big part of that is uh, a biannual licensing for um, for me as a professional engineer. I only have to do it every other year, so this this is that every other year. Yeah, but also includes training for my staff and that sort of thing. You might find out a lot of departments that we weren't able to go to conferences and trainings the last couple of years, so. Now they're trying, try I know even myself, I've got to get my CPE credits, so it's a lot of it's trying to get back to that training and mm -hmm. conferences that we go to. Are you going to be smarter then after the training? I don't think not I possible. can get it. Not, <laughs> <laughs> not possible. So a big portion of that bump is the licenses. Yep. And That's it. Miscellaneous. Other, not the training is miscellaneous, but any other questions anybody wants to pose? Nope. Been a good leadoff hitter. 
There we go. Just like on baseball. Did I get a base hit? You got on this? base. All right. That's your job. <laughs> I'll Not take to it. Get a home run, just get on base. <laughs> all right. Good job. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Bob. Next up is Karen with Economic Development. Oh, you didn't want me to do the intro here? Or something? You can do no, that. Okay. You can be the MC <laughs> while I'm flipping the pages. <laughs> Can't take you anywhere. If it's not coffee, it's a. <laughs> My mother never let me wear white when I was growing up. So as soon as I got older, I bought white. Almost there. Almost flipped. I brought the CRA annual report. I didn't know if all of you were familiar with it. I know that many of you are, but I thought I would give you that so you have an overview of the activities in the CRA for the past year. Very good. Study it later? Uh, yeah. Won't yeah. study it now. When yeah. you're, when you're okay. relaxing. Okay, Karen, it's all I, yours. Thank you. Karen Lemons, Economic Development Manager. Um, I have the economic development budget and the CRA budget. Uh, my department is a department of one, which is myself. Um, so if you look at the uh, economic development budget, I'm looking at pages 12 to 14. Yes. I'm not sure which book that is. Detailed one. Okay. Essentially, the budget is um, personnel. Um, there's a few min, uh, miscellaneous things for office and um, training and memberships, but the budget is essentially what it was last year. Increases just for um, salaries and wages. And again, it's going up our 4%. It's a 4% again. Okay. Any questions? I have no, no, I had no issue. Uh, yeah, just oh, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Melody Engel. So on page 12, which you referenced, salaries and wages, that's that's your your salary at 92000 with one person? Okay. All right. Thank you. So my question is, so you said the budget is largely the same as last year and, and likely previous years before that. So has it changed a lot over the last Correct. few mm -hmm. years? Pretty much the same? Right. Okay. Are there any new programs going on or in the economic development? Yeah, the, the programs the aren't. Words on the sure. numerical. The programs aren't, you know, budget related, so they're not reflected in here. But we have various incentive programs to bring new businesses into the city that um, provide ad valorem tax incentives, tax credits for new businesses. Um, we have grants within our community redevelopment area for new and existing businesses. Uh, we have a historic tax abatement program for um, commercial projects that are renovating some of our older historic buildings that provide tax credits. So we have a myriad of, of programs to help <coughs> recruit and um, maintain our, our businesses here. How are you, how are you seeing the business development within Target? In spite of the economy, it's been growing very, very well. Um, we have a new industrial park on the north side of the river called River Bend. Um, that's the first, when I say industrial park, I don't mean smokestacks, it's a business park. Um, employment center, employment related um, jobs. They opened, they broke ground in 2021. Um, and of the sites, they have 14 sites that have been, um, that are under contract. They have six pending, and they only have one available. So we're attracting a lot of industry to the city and industries that provide living wages and employment-related wages. So we're very excited about that. We're probably one of the few 
cities in Pinellas County that have that open space that can provide you know, new and updated business parks. So we're very excited about that. And we're working with the county. The county has what's called an employment sites program that provides outright grants to new industries to help um, gap financing, if you will, help industries that um, are looking to either build new or expand. And for you know, lack of financing related to whether it's um, unforeseen circumstances, say they need to install sewer lines that they didn't expect, or they need to do underground vault system for their water retention, things like that. The county will step in and provide grants for that. So I've been working with a couple of businesses that we're hoping to take advantage of that program. Um, and in our CRA, which, which we'll get to with the next, um, we're seeing a lot of new businesses. I think our downtown is pretty yeah, full out. Time, yeah. I don't know that there are any available spaces. There's um, the one building that's on the corner of Lemon and Ring that was just um, renovated. They did a great job there. In fact, we're having a ribbon cutting tonight for foreshore golf carts that's, that's opening. Um, that has a couple spaces, but um, that's going to be filled pretty soon because um, we've got a lot of people who are calling and inquiring and want to be here. So we're very excited about that. In fact, we're not turning away people, but we're finding a hard time. People want to be downtown, and we're having a hard time finding spaces for them. So that's good. And I think some of that's due to the grants that we offer. Um, in your booklet, you'll see there's a couple pages on the incentive grants that we offer, and they've been very popular. We've had... Um, 116 projects over the 10 years we've had the program. Um, we're getting a lot of the buildings renovated. The newest program was the building code program, and we started that because we saw a lot of need for these older buildings that have been retail, and we've been trying to bring in restaurants or breweries or changes of use. And in some cases, the property owners who own the buildings weren't willing to spend the money maybe to upgrade the plumbing or put in new electrical or put in fire suppression systems and all of those things that cost money or ADA bathrooms. These are older buildings that need a lot of work. So we started that building code grant that's available to either the tenant or the building owner. And that provides um, a 50% reimbursable grant up to 10,000 if it's a two-story building or 7,500 if it's a single story for those interior upgrades to bring the building to code. And we've used that. Now, that started in 2020 in March. We approved that just when the, everything started to crash and COVID hit. But we've had eight of those grants already. So we're seeing those downtown businesses being able to upgrade the buildings. And what's that doing is we're getting more quality tenants in. And you know if the tenant moves out, it's, it's turnkey for somebody new. So that's helped us to bring in some of the some of the restaurants and some of the um, uh, other businesses that have proliferated downtown. And then we just started a photo mural grant also. Um, we haven't had anybody take advantage of that yet, but I'm sure we'll have some in the future. What's that one now, photo mural? Yeah, it provides a $2,500 reimbursable grant for um, putting a mural on the outside of a building or a photo. The idea would be to put like a historical photo on the outside of a building. That came about um, in a lot of the beautification discussions we've had on some of these older buildings that maybe don't look quite, quite right and are very visible on up and down Alt 19 or downtown and you've got this ugly you know, exterior wall that's just blank. So hoping to attract you know, some artists to start doing them. You've seen a lot of murals, I think, already that have been coming downtown, and that's all been just organically uh, happening. So this will be a push to try to get more. And you put one on the development office. I call yes. The yellow building. Yeah, my little building. That's right. Yeah, I'm not in City Hall. I'm in that little building down by the by Spring Bayou, and we put one on there as, as an example so people could look and see what, what those murals could look like. Idle curiosity. That photograph, I, you know, I lived right across the street. I had that exact photo. Where, where did you get yours? Oh, yeah, from the Historical Society. Okay. Yep. Okay. It was actually a three, it's, it's a panoramic photo. Yes. And it shows what the Spring Valley looked like in 
four, I believe it is, because if you see the the old hotel, the Tarpon Inn is the old, the original one is still there. Um, so they brought that all together, and it was a pretty slick system of of putting that on the side of the building. Good. Okay. Do we want to jump over to the CRA? And Karen is. We have several new members. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Tell them what the CRA is. Okay. In, in the condensed 60 second version. <laughs> One other question, and, and I'm sorry. Oh, that, okay. And I'm sorry that I'm new if I ask a stupid no, question. Ask. So, um, a lot of discussions about the proposed Hilton at the sponge docks and all that. And, um, and a lot of suggestions I'm seeing from people of wanting more boutique hotels and things of that nature. Is, is it your job? I don't know whose job is it to negotiate the contracts with the proposed Hilton guy or other people. Who Who is the negotiator that says, hey, this, the citizens don't want it here. Would you think about the Pappas property? Who, who exactly does that? Well, if you've been following, that's kind of a community thing. <laughs> um, we have, uh, we have a, a, a comprehensive plan that provides and a zoning code that provides um, some guidelines on, on what can go where. Right. Um, in terms of that particular project, there are no design guidelines per se, but um, because it's in the sponge docks and we know that that's a very historic area, people care passionately about it, that there are going to be certain criteria that the residents and the people are gonna be looking for and, and what it looks like. So what, what, what happens when we get a project like that is several staff work together and talk to the the developer um, and let them know okay this may not work this probably will work and try to get them to a point where they bring forth a project that you know we think may may work right. I mean I saw a lot of the it seemed like the consensus and I could be wrong seemed like that a lot of the people and this is no opinion of mine, would prefer to have the boutique bread and breakfasts and, and that kind of thing. And that's some of the stuff that I've been reading. And, and I was just wondering if, if we were going to go in that direction, is that your job to try and find those kinds of things? And then we have to have zoning. And I mean, who, who would be the person? Or? Yeah, I work with brokers, um, real estate agents, site selectors. Um, so those are the people that typically we work through, not, not, the, you know, not the hotels or the the companies themselves, but they're looking for sites. And so those are the things we'll look at. And then you also have to look at the economics of it. So, you know, if you have to buy a large five-acre property, you know, a 30-room hotel probably isn't going to work economically for them. So it's got to be the right, you know, the right site for what you're looking for. So I'm brand new on this budget committee too, but the way I'm, and I am following this on the social media, the tarp and the page, I thought we were just at step one, if we're going to do it or not do it. I thought that was way down the line. And it may be. It probably, and it I'm might be and understand. or. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. might be and or. Yeah, it was, it was a conditional use application. It wasn't a site plan, yeah. um, which comes later, because they were putting it on two parcels that have different zoning. One of them required a conditional use and one didn't. So they went through that process. But... Again, um, going back to because of where it is, mm -hmm. um, the staff thought that we probably need to have the applicant bring in a little bit more information about what it's going to look like because, you know, the chances of approving a conditional use for a hotel when they don't see what it is probably was not going to work. Mm -hmm. So we had the applicant do a little bit more than what they typically do, but that was a, just a conditional use. It, it, whether it's zoned correctly, whether they get the proper zoning for it. Well, there's a lot of opinions out there, so bless you. <laughs> yes, there are. Yes, there are. That's what's fun about Tarpon Springs. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> passionate about where they live. Okay, any more questions there? Let's jump over to the CRA. Okay, so the CRA... Pretend we landed from Mars. We don't know what CRA is. Okay, so <laughs> briefly, a CRA is called a Community Redevelopment Area. It is a... Um, designated area has to be approved by the county. It has to meet several criteria of blight, slum, underdevelopment, um, vacant, unimproved areas. Um, there's a set of criteria that's set by state statutes. 
Um, once you design, you, you designate the boundaries, you meet the criteria, um, you have your, your CRA. What the CRA is, it's, is the area, the property tax values that are there when it's established. In our case, it was established in the year 2000. So that the values of that time, is that's your baseline. So as the years progress and those property values rise, that increment, which is the difference between the base year and previous years, those funds get put into a separate fund that only can be used within that CRA. Now the school system still gets their, their additional monies, um, but the others, that additional increment goes to um, a separate trust fund in the city and it can only be used within that CRA. And the CRA for Tarpon? The CRA for Tarpon is, uh, it bounders on the south at Mears, on the north, the Anclote River Bridge, and then it runs east, um, north and south along alternate 19, and then it takes in a wide swath of the downtown out to Lava Street, and then on the west side to Spring Bayou. So it's essentially the main business corridor of the city. Carolina. And that's why you see beautification, and um, typically when you go to some downtowns, you'll see a lot of beautification, landscaping, signage, things like that, and that's typically because they have a CRA they have those additional funds that the rest of the city doesn't have that you can put in for infrastructure projects, beautification projects, incentives for businesses, all types of things like that. And Karen, I'm not sure if you mentioned, but the city contributes their portion over that base value, but also I don't know if you mentioned the county does too. Yes, the county and city both contribute to that. Yeah, over that base value, so. Okay. Shall we dive into the numbers? So the CRA budget, I'm looking at page 196. How about 195? Okay. Does that basically tell one looking at that? That, that would the be the revenues revenue page. are up 41,000? Correct. Okay. And that's from the increase in the property values. Okay. Now we're going to 196. Okay. Um, so 196, there's just a couple things I wanted to point out. Um, under rents and leases, 44.00, uh, you see that one up $13,000. Yes. That is because we're now renting, these are from rentals of two parking lots. Um, two years ago, we began renting the eastern half of the parking lot behind the flagship bank building, 116 North South Pinellas. And then this past year, we just leased the west portion of that lot. The lot's owned by two different owners. So that so increases. We have, that whole lot. we have the whole lot now. Yes, and they've made the upgrades, and so that's adding to the parking, parking downtown. Um, and then under 52-00 operating supplies, you'll see that went up um, about 10,000, and that reflects the historic marker program. We started a local historic marker program with the Tarpon Springs Historical Society this past year. So this is an allocation of $10,000 to um, provide historical markers throughout the city. There's an application process that goes through the Historical Society. Um, they approve them. Um, they're nice um, cast iron brass markers that can be either pole mounted or building mounted. Okay. So if they're a building that's approved, then that's to give them the plaque. Right. With a little few words on it saying. We have several of them already in the downtown there's one on the Fackless building, the, um, um, the Vincent building, um, uh, up and down Tarpon Avenue. There are brass plaques that are on the side of the buildings. Uh, OK. 
Okay, and I think those are the only two. Um, 52-13 flowers and plants. That went up a little to up to 10,000 now for additional flowers and plants for the CRA. Uh, we're always trying to add beautification. So that's um, for landscaping. Everything else remains pretty much the same. And then, um, of course, the additional 287 for projects that come up throughout the year. So the 287 seems high. Is that 287,000? Right. right. Mm -hmm. Is there anything specific that that's for? Um, well, I know we have a, a program for the Jitney building. They're putting in, um, there's a design right now. It's going to the board, I think, next month or this month. Um, you remember the old Jitney that, the, that was restored by the Historical Society? It was an old, um, old vehicle that used to be used to carry people around back in the early 1900s and they restored it, and it's been stored in the public works building, but they want to use it more, um, so there's a design to put in a, a glass building behind the historical society that the Jitney would go into, it would be on display like a little mini museum. So that's, I know that's one project that uh, will be coming out of there. So overall, I mean, that, that budget is a significant Increase from last year, correct? Isn't it just six percent? Um, are, you are you talking about the? I don't. I base. pretend we have newbies and obies, and looking at this, uh, one ninety-five told us what the revenue side is. Now, what conclusion can we come from one ninety-six? He's looking at the fund balance reserve. Yeah, that's money. Mm. We had the revenues. We have excess money. We right. put it in point ninety nine. That's a reserve. Right. Sometimes what happens is the board's going to meet in a couple of weeks and try to decide what capital items they want to use. So to tr the balance of fund revenues equal expenditures. I I didn't have enough expenditures so far because they haven't designated designated capital projects. So I stuck it under point ninety nine reserve. Until when they think they'll meet in a couple of weeks and they'll say, Bear. I think part of it is Jitney building for the construction of that okay. and some other items and stuff. So it's an early budget. It, it's, it's called balancing plug. the funds, but I didn't have anything to identify it with yet. Okay. So it's, but it's going to be in a couple of weeks. Understand. Anybody, any other questions for Karen? Just in general, so in your view, has the CRA been, the, the project been performing pretty well, better than your expectations, would you say? Yes, okay. we've, we've come a long way in the last five or six years, a long way. Yeah. I think it's due to the programs, it's due to the, the policies that the board has set and the, you know, the support that they give to the CRA. Mm -hmm. Nice. Karen, thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have planning. CRAs have more than emergence? Because don't they want to do whatever association that affects all these things? Those things are CRAs. All right, I think we're going to move this for a second. So I can put my laptop here. Okay, so they just included it in there. Yep. Okay. All right. <coughs> How are you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Is there any intro, Ron, or am I just supposed to take off? <laughs> you're getting just... Boy, this is Renee Vincent, the planning director of the city of Tarpon Springs. Yeah, you're Springs. the MC here. <laughs> All right. Yeah, good, good afternoon, everyone. The city everyone. for a long time. <laughs> Longer than you? Not quite. Not quite, no. <laughs> Renee Vincent, planning and zoning director. Um, so... Is that raining? It is raining. Um, our department is solely funded by the general fund. Um, last year we did add a position, so you do see that 
in addition to your regular <clears throat> budget increase for salaries, we had a position that was added, so that also has had an impact on the overall budget. I think the biggest thing of of, uh, of note is the the uh, the increase in the uh, professional services budget. So I will concentrate on that for the moment, and then obviously we can come back and 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 talk about. Um, uh, specifics, uh, you know, other line items, if you like. So under that professional services budget, we have um, we've we've had two items in there. One is an economic development strategy. The other is um, a cultural resources survey, which is a historic property survey. Uh, we've budgeted those. Uh, one is sixty-five thousand. One is fifty thousand. We have to upfront those costs. We expect those to be grant reimbursed. We don't. We've applied for grants. We don't, if we don't get those grants, then this money will not be spent. So it's a, they'll get reimbursed on the back end. So that's $115,000 of that 216000 that you're seeing in the professional services budget. And tell me once again, what yes. are the two? What are the two? What are the two projects? Yes. So one is an economic development strategy for the city of Tarpon Springs. So that's something that I worked with Karen Lemons on previously. Right. So it's an overall, you know, how do we continue to promote economic development, the right kind of economic development for the city. So it's, it's, it's downtown, but it's industrial district, it's US 19, it's looking at a, a, an overall kind of, we've never had a, an overall comprehensive economic development strategy. Um, and this is something that we've gotten some direction from the Board of Commissioners on that they would like to see. So we've, uh, we tried last year to get a grant for this. Um, we were unsuccessful, so we, we're hopeful that we'll be able to get it this year through the state of Florida. It's an, it's an assistance grant. So uh, we should, hopefully we will know before the budget gets finalized if we're gonna receive that particular grant. So we may be able to just pull the whole thing out of the budget if we don't get the grant. Um, unless I get some direction that the board would like us to go ahead and do that work anyway with, with the general fund dollars, and that, that's a policy decision. So right now it's intended to be funded by a grant. Okay. So is that the 50 or the 65? That's the 65. Okay, so you said it's to develop the strategy. Can you just be more specific? What does so that mean? Yeah, I, should have, I didn't have the entire thing. So what we're, what we're looking at is an asset-based economic development strategy for the city. So a lot of, in the past, a lot of things are kind of needs-based. We, we, need, we need a hotel. Um, an asset-based economic development strategy looks at what are the unique things that tar make TARP and TARP, and, and then how do we generate economic development around those assets? So it's not my, sp my specialty, so to speak. I worked with the economic development manager, Karen, to, to, to kind of move this forward. So that's why we need a consultant to develop this. Um, but it's, a, it's an asset-based economic development strategy of looking at what's great about Tarpon, what brings people here now, and, and how do we get more of it? How do we preserve that? And then how do we get other appropriate economic development for the city? Does, it, does, that, does that help? Yes, yeah, so we're going to pay a consultant to do this. And is that, that goes through like an RFP process to pick out the consultant? It, yes, ma'am. Okay, and has that been started already? It has not. Okay. So if once we if we get notice, then we'll go ahead and do the RFP process. We also we we also have an opportunity to use um, Pinellas County has um, uh, five general planning consultants that they've got that are broadly qualified for a whole range of services, including economic development strategies and stuff. So we also have an opportunity if we wanted to go directly to one of those. But more than likely, I think my prefer preference would be. Let's go out and see what we get and instead of trying to piggyback on another uh, another contract, unless it's just something really ideal. So, uh, But we have that option as well. The, okay, and then the, 50, the 50K? The 50,000 is a cultural resources study. Um, we will be, be we're applying directly to the state uh, for funding through the historic preservation arm of the state, if you will, and they, they do annual grants to certified local governments. The city of Tarpon is a certified local government for historic preservation. So we've been successful in getting these grants in the past. In fact, we're wrapping up one right now. Um, so this, this one is intended to be uh, focused on the, the Union Academy area and establishing you know, the history and culture and assets of that and, and studying that area with the intent in the future of you know, how do we preserve that area? How do we stop gentrification from happening? How do we, so it's, it's looking at the Union Academy area. 
Um, and so again, that'll be a um, that'll be conducted by a consultant. There, we may work directly with University of Florida. Um, they have a really good program for that, and we've worked with them before, and we can go directly to them. So we're, that one again, we're we'll, we're waiting to see if we're going to get funded. Um, uh, I'm sorry, that one's not through the state. That one's actually that's a national endowment grant that we've applied for. Um, we were I got my grants mixed up. Um, we sh we submitted that was a national grant for cultural resources um, services, and we were shortlisted from like two over 250 applicants down to a group of um, I want to say like 50. Uh -huh. So to do then to to go forward with the rest of the application process. So we're really hopeful that we're going to get this one. And again, we should be finding out um, sometime by I, I think by in the next month or two on that one. So hopefully, again, that one, we, we will know if we're going to get that fund. So who writes the grants? Um, on, on both of these instances, uh, my uh, principal planner, Caroline Lanford, um, is the person that drafted those, those two particular grants. We had a lot of, a lot of help you know, from other, you know, other folks that you know, have specialties here and there. Karen helped with the economic development one. So, um, you know, Pat, Land, uh, Pat McNeese, my other planner. So we have a lot of good expertise for applying for the grants. Um, you know, we've, we've had good success. But we're, you know, the economic development one's been a hard nut to crack, though, so that, that hopefully we'll get that one. So that covers roughly 115. That covers 115,000. One. Another new... There's something else big. Yes. The other... Um, <laughs> yes. They have, we have a new line item in there that says engineering development review slash plats. Plats we've already had funded in the plat review. So whenever a new subdivision comes in, there's a process that after it gets approved to be built, the last thing that happens is plat review. And those are very formal documents that have to be reviewed by an engineer before they get recorded with, um, with the county and become a you know, public recorded document. So in the past, that's been a separate line item. In fact, if you look at the budget and look at the past years, you'll see plat review. So now that's zeroed out. We're wrapping that into this new line item with engineering development review. Um, this is, while this appears to be new, this is actually a service that the engineering development review is for reviewing development projects that are coming through, like a hotel, for adherence to the city's stormwater requirements as part of the site plan. We don't have anybody on staff in the city that can review those plans for that storm for you know for compliance with state and local stormwater requirements, so that is something that we uh, pay a consultant to do. So all these review projects that you see coming through Planning and Zoning Board and Board of Commissioners, they you know they're getting you know as part of our technical review committee, they're getting reviewed by our stormwater engineer of record. That has been being picked up by the Public Works engineer of record and budget. So this is a little more transparent. We're trying to pull this out of their, their budget. It'll show up in hours, and then we will be responsible for, for billing it and paying it. Along with that, I intend to go to the board of this year, the Board of Commissioners, and ask that <coughs> the developers be responsible for some portion of that cost. Now, right now, it's not. The city's bearing that cost, but we have to review these to make sure that the plans are reflecting what needs to happen so that we're not flooding properties and things of that nature. Um, but the, the city manager's given me authorization to go, go back to the board of commissioners and seek you know, authorization to establish a new fee for, or at least a reimbursement of, you know, probably partial. I mean, I think one, one review up front is good, but what we get into are multiple iterations, and frankly, sometimes the developers are using us for quality control and, or, or our engineer of records rather than their own. So I'd like to be able to get into a posture where you get one, one courtesy review of your stormwater plan, and, mm -hmm. you know, and then the next one you start paying for those in some either full or partial something so that it's not entirely on the city, you know, to, to do that. So, so this is a new item, you know, to start that program. Um, but again, we've been we've been doing the stormwater reviews out of the public public works budget 
under their engineer of record services with the same stormwater consultant. So it's just kind of moving that over to our budget where, where it belongs. Um, the other, uh, we have the Connect Tarpon Springs engagement software annual renewal. We've had that for, this is about the third year. I think last year it wasn't in my budget for renewal, but this year it shows up in my budget for renewal. So it's a citywide um, platform for public engagement. So if you Google Connect Tarpon Springs, you'll find it. Um, so that's just an annual ongoing cost for the software as a provider service. And that's appearing where? That's under professional services. You'll, yeah. It says um, yeah. Connect Tarpon Engagement. The, um, we also are asking for an additional $15,000 toward public engagement for our comprehensive plan update. The comp plan update is ongoing now. We have a consultant doing that. But the public engagement side is really on us. And this is something that we're getting a lot of, um, you know, an expectation to do more and to try every avenue that we can to get the public more actively involved in these complaint in these updates and then frankly sometimes it's like pulling teeth and you know so the connect tarpon we put things out there we have public meetings we advertise them that we notice them um, along with this you will see another increase um, in the budget from for postage and mailers and and things of that nature we've literally been you know either trying to get mailers into our utility bills which costs money as well as or direct mail postcards out to get people out to these public meetings to get them to participate uh, we use social media but it's still it's an uphill battle so you'll see that increase in the postage and, and printing side of the budget as well um, so this extra twelve thousand five hundred when we did the scope of services with um, with our consultant and there was a budget at, you know of a hundred thousand dollars we had to truncate off some of the at the end of the process when the when the plan starts actually going through for formal approval with the board of the planning and zoning board and the board of commissioners and through those public hearings it was expected that the staff would carry that through we really think it's important that since the consultant is doing the plan that they be there lockstep with us so that is it that additional money really is to finish the process which will be after this fiscal year it'll probably be in January, February, March time frame. So that is an additional line item that we're asking for just for public engagement. Um, yes, ma'am. So your consultant believes that direct mail is the way to engage the public? It's not, it wasn't, the consultant didn't ask us to do this. We've been, this was the city staff. I mean, we have been, we've been using social media. We've been doing direct mails. We've been using the uh, utility bill inserts. Um, we, we've been using everything that we can we're, you know, we're still not getting as much participation as we would like, um, but we continue to, I mean, that it, direct mail is still an effective way, believe it or not, in Tarpon to get, get people to pick up and read something and, and show up. So um, that's, so we're trying to, we try to use the utility bills when we can, but it takes five cycles to hit every house in Tarpon Springs with the utility bills. So sometimes we still have to do a direct mail out um, for, you know, this is, you know, we don't, we don't update the comprehensive plan more than once about every, you know, 10, 15 years. So it's important to get the, once we get through the comp plan, I don't think direct mailing to the mass, all of Tarpon Springs will be on our agenda very much. This is kind of a unique situation. It's oh, a complicated topic too. It so is. I can see people not it's, really know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's um, it is yeah. hard. Um, let's see the multimodal quality of service update. We have a quality of service report that, again, was done back in 2009, 2010 time frame um, that focuses on kind of an expanded downtown area. So if you think about the community redevelopment area, only a little bit larger, includes the sponge docks. Um, and it, the, it was, it's adopted part of our comprehensive plan in the transportation element. Um, we do want to get that updated. We can do most of that work in-house, um, but the technical analysis, like traffic counts, and modeling and stuff that comes along with that is not something that we have expertise to do. So it's something that we would like to get done. Um, if you need something to, you know, go away, that might be a, that might be a candidate um, to do so. I, I do want to try to keep it in and get that updated eventually, but it's not, um, it's not diehard critical right now. Um, let me see. 
The other, the other item in there that you see click to gov, that is to allow the planning department to, re, to, to allow, so people apply for, you know, they're applying for site plan approval, there's a fee associated with that. Right now we still have to collect checks and take them to the clerk's office. We don't have the online fee payment. But to get that established, we have to work with the provider um, to set that whole system up. Um, again, this is one that's, frankly, in my opinion, is a nice to have, and it's something that could be cut if, you know, <laughs> I have other bigger fish to fry right now. I can still walk a check down to the clerk's <laughs> office. So, but it is something that, that, you know, eventually we do need to do, but I don't know that we need to do it this year. So, um so are you that's are just you, getting in with the times i mean it is it is it's more it's it's more convenient for the public and for the applicants and the developer but absolutely. it's not like i get a hundred of these a month you know we get three or four a month so it is a little little different so so it's not like pretty much a standard budget year for you because you had the new position and we got the <laughs> it's not plan <laughs> correct it, it's not and i'm hoping that um some of these you'll see we you know we put an increase back in for um it's called it's under other current charges line 49 that's where we that's the money that we use to put the required public notices in the paper for we have to do a notice of a property is re being rezoned or conditional use or land use and zoning we're required under state law to do that and they have to go in the tampa bay times and so they're expensive um so we try we took that down by five thousand dollars i think last year looking at our, what we've had to spend this year we do get those reimbursed again on the back end by most of it i mean every once in a while we have to do an ad ourselves um because of something that's being slowed down because of us but we but those largely do get reimbursed but that is another increase that you see going back up to the fifteen thousand dollars reimbursed by developer. by the developer um everything else is kind of you know, so because I now have four planners with professional memberships, so you do see a little bit of an increase in, um, you know, conference, you know, training budget for, for, you know, and dues for four AICP memberships versus three that we had um, the year before. Uh, is there anything else you want me to touch on? The two things that I talked about, I didn't mind if they get cut. I truly don't mind if they get cut. So I realize it's, you know, everyone's looking for every dollar probably. So um, I'll We're take so it. so early in the budget. I commission. know, I know. But I always like to be able to offer something. It's for nice <laughs> to have. It's good. Always got man willing to give something. Okay. Store that one in mind, just in case. We'll see. Right, Ron's always taking over. notes on how to cut the budget. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Questions, any questions? Anybody? I think we've covered most of them. Yeah. I appreciate your thoroughness, yeah. <laughs> yes. It was easy Thank to follow you. you. That's the way. <laughs> it's a small budget, but it's, you know. It's important. Yeah. I hope it's important. I <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. It is. Thank small, you all. Small but mighty. Huh? Small but mighty, yes. There you go. So. <laughs> I agree. Very thorough. And at any time, if you have questions on the planning and zoning side of things, I know you're talking to Karen about the hotel. I'm happy to answer any questions about that as well. Contact me offline, though. <laughs> Anything else? No. Right. We're good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Over to our MC. Yes. Now we have Building Development Department with Kevin Powell, the director, and I believe he's got his assistant, Keith Mead, here. I do. Good afternoon, Kevin Powell, Building Development Department. Um, kind of looking through the budget, uh, not a lot of big changes uh, from last year to this year. Uh, we are budgeting another vehicle in there as we had a position added. Uh, and with that position, it did not come with a vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and um, budget for, for a vehicle for that uh, inspector, uh, the, the new position created for our field inspector. We added that in last year. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, they trying to figure out what department to put it in. They put it in my department. It came with the position, no vehicle. Okay. So, 
So now we're going to, you know, have to obviously budget for one of those. Um, our department is uh, primarily funded by the general fund. Uh, we do generate some uh, permit revenues. Uh, moving forward uh, for next year, uh, we did have a uh, fee schedule change. So there's going to be some of the uh, technology fees. We, we have a separate uh, line item in our, our permitting budget um, that's going to start reducing the cost from general fund into those technologies with our uh, online plan review, our um, uh, phone scheduling, and our, our uh, text scheduling. Uh, so a lot of those technologies uh, will start to offset from a technology fee. So we did adjust the, uh, the, the budget, or not our budget, but our fee schedule. So once we get that all implemented, we should see um, less coming out of general fund next budget cycle. Um, pretty much everything has stayed the same. Um, if you have any questions uh, of what you see in there, I'll be more than help, happy to uh, assist. And no, Ron, I don't want to cut my budget. <laughs> and which what did you want to volunteer up to? didn't you get <laughs> nothing the vehicle it's all after <laughs> the yeah my guy can keep walking <laughs> and you have the drone right you saw the we have the drone we are going into um that's going to come out of our uh, uh tree budget uh, shannon is the one who mainly uses that the drone we have, uh, we are not able to use anymore with oh, the technology okay. um, for uh, uh, public service of its uh, Chinese technology, and we cannot use it okay. after next year. Uh, and, and walk us through, you, you see the buildings, or are you doing something with the trees now? What, what are you doing? So there? mainly what we're using it for are uh, some roof inspections. When we get two-story roofs, we don't want our inspectors on the roofs. Um, when they were building the Mears apartment complex, they had the, the four-story uh, stair tower, and we would have to get up on the scaffolding and look at all the uh, steel within the, uh, the, the, the concrete blocks. We were able to put the drone up there. We were able to talk to the, um, the, the contractor that was up on the scaffold. He was able to pull his tape measure out and, and answer the questions we have. So it's kind of a safety item on the building side. We also use it for floodplain management side. Uh, so once we get flooding, we can put the drone up and start mapping uh, what is going on with that. And then, of course, uh, Shannon mainly uses it at the Arborist, uh, uh, doing the uh, uh, tree inventories, and uh, she's the primary user of the drone. She is our drone pilot also. Do we get a credit on workers' comp for this? Is Probably not. <laughs> That's something we ought to look at. I mean, if yeah. you're literally not having to go up on a roof. And right. We, we're, we're trying to, to keep our, our inspectors on the ground as much as possible. It's, it's the, not always possible to do, but two-story roofs, I'd, I'd rather them put the drone up, and there again we can talk with the contractors that are on the roof so they can show us what they're doing instead of us standing on a roof. And at that point we can also take pictures and videos, so we always have that um, you know, in our system too. I would think that we could reclassify those labor codes for the workers' comp because those are real high-risk areas and maybe get some savings there. Yeah, potentially. Um, but, yeah, we've been using the drone now for, I think, about three years. Awesome. So I'm just curious, what are you, why are we inventorying trees? I'm new to this. <laughs> okay, so we're a tree city. I understand that. And uh, in order to maintain tree city status and, and other grants, you want to you want to inventory the tree and the tree canopy within your city, so we know what we have here. You know, people say we're always cutting down trees; we're not replanting trees. So, if we have an inventory of what trees are in the city, then we know what our canopy is. You know, you, you remove ten trees, we put in fifteen trees. So it, it's it's a constant um, record of of what trees we have within the city of Tarpon Springs. So we are going to be doing a tree inventory. We've uh, put in for a grant, and it's probably going to be about a year-long process to inventory every single tree within the city of Tarpon Springs, uh, what we have, what species, uh, invasives, 
all, you know, th those type of things. So, um, you know, just doing the tree inventory, um, we, we have knowledge of what is here. Also, um, we're able to big plots of land instead of walking in and trying to map out what is there, we can actually see from above what we have in there. So it just also keeps our people out of, out of the, the bushes as much as possible. So really at the end of the day, once on, you're gonna have an inventory by species of all the trees within in the city of Tarpon Springs. At a certain point in time. Yes, that's what we're working towards. That's, that's the goal. We're gonna be working with the University of Florida. Um, we're trying, with the grant, it would send uh, uh, UF students here to do a lot of that mapping, and it would be a, a, a lower cost to us doing that with the grant. I believe it, um, about half, I think, Ron, if I remember right on that grant. Yes. But it, it would cost us about half of what we budgeted for the tree inventory. And the tree bank uh, budget went down a bit because people aren't budgeting for trees. For we we ask other departments to budget for trees, and for whatever reason they don't give us their budget. So we're not going to assume that they need trees. Um, but when they start calling for trees, I say, well, it's, I guess that's in your budget. You did not budget for it, and there's specific items that you know the tree bank says where you can where you can use the monies for for trees. Okay. It's it's not just randomly placed, you know, on somebody's property. It's it's very specific as to how how we use those funds. Because that went down quite a bit. Okay. So are you expecting folks to start asking for trees, or maybe well, we, not we, so much? Some of the other departments they will. Okay. They, they will say uh, we're, we're removing some trees at the park and, and you know, we want to use a tree bank to put trees in. And we, I, I just say, well, did you budget for those? Okay. You got to put something in the budget where, you know, we're not just a slush fund. You and know. they get smarter for the next year. Uh, no, but that's, <laughs> <laughs> that we would no. like, but no. Okay. No. <laughs> kind of a big item, just looking at big items, books, publications, subscriptions, hopefully you haven't already explained it, but it's $37,000 lower under. Under. next year than next year. That's right. under. Under. We, under. I agree, it's under. Right. Um, Always good to ask under questions, too. We don't ask just over. Yeah, we, every, every three-year code cycle, and we're in the second year of a code cycle. Uh, so the next year there will be code books that we have to purchase again, um, you know, for all of our inspectors. So it's, it's a three year code cycle We're we're in between that right now. So it would have come down some, yes, we do still buy code books. Um, we do have um, uh, different technical publications that we need to purchase. And then of course training, uh, but it will go up again once we get back into the uh, code cycle change. We will have to purchase all new books again. Every every three years, we have to purchase new books. And those books are that much? Um, one code book is uh, $700. That's just for one code book. So you've got four inspectors, plans examiner, um, building official, deputy building official, and there's multiple code books um, that we purchase. So we purchase a series of them, not just one book. And those aren't hosted in the cloud somewhere? Or they can all share? No, you, you still have to pay for them. Got they're it. they're not giving you those books for free. Got it. They're, they're printed from the uh, International Code Council and there's Florida specific books. So we can look online to a to a point we can go online and research some items, uh, but to have the book, we highlight, we tab, sure. you know, when there's a lot of uh, questions and concern. And we also do purchase in that um, bundle uh, PDF, so they are on our tablet. So we can do keyword searches in the field. You know, we have the book and the tablets and do able to do keyword search. 
but they, they're not going to give those away. <laughs> and how many field people do you have? We added one last year. Did we you added one last year. I have uh, three building inspectors and one construction field inspector, which is our new site person, the engineering department that we're trying to reestablish again. So that's a whole different set of, of uh, books and um, training that they need compared to what my uh, building inspectors are. Then I have a, my deputy building official who also works in the field sometimes, and then, of course, our plans examiner. So, you know, we, we got a pretty good staff for, for the size city that we're in, but, we're, you know, like everybody else, we're still, you know, struggling to keep up. I was just, you're reading my mind. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's, right it's extremely busy out I'm there. not opening up to let's add more people. But no, no, it's keeping, not add more people, but we do. Reasonably keeping up. We're reasonably keeping up, and then we start to get into a bind. We'll go ahead and uh, do our um, uh, third party, our municipal support. We will bring them in or. Third party contractor? Yes, we have them. We have one under contract um, that we bring in a few times a year when we start getting into a bind. Um, we might get behind on some plan review. We'll go ahead and push things to him to go ahead and, and, and catch us up. And sometimes that's the best way to do it. It, it, as it really is. To adding no, I, I, permanent head count. Right. Yeah. You, you put on a, a, another full time plans examiner. Right. You know, I have one plans examiner. Yes, yeah, she is busy all day, every day. But to put a second one on, it, I just couldn't justify that. So that's what I'll give back, my second plans examiner. <laughs> I, we already had that. You're not giving anything back. Right, that you don't have. <laughs> You're giving something back that you don't have. Well, I try. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very common. Throw it at any general question. For what it's worth, your department is ran really well. Thank I've you very much. I've never dealt with a building, and I, I deal with 100 of them. And okay. I never have dealt with, it's beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Tell the other people down here that say we're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that, I really do. Okay, anybody, any other questions for Kevin? Thank you. Run. Thank you. <laughs> Run. Thank you. One ten. <laughs> How are we doing timing wise, MC? We're doing good. Okay. I mean, these are good. But then the police department oh, comes my. in. Oh, <laughs> oh, then there's the police department. Ah. Uh, well, here we we have the police chief here. You know, Mr. Jeff Young and Mr. Frank <laughs> Regario and. Rebecca Hall. I'm the MC here, if you're just wondering. <laughs> you're the MC. <laughs> okay. How y'all doing? Good. Good to see you. How are you, Jeff? Good, sir. How are you? Hi, thank you. Nothing. Oh, nice and warm. <laughs> okay. It's cold in here. Wow. <laughs> In the packets, we, I'm Jeff Young, the Chief of Police for Tarpon Springs Police Department. Uh, it's my honor and privilege to be here to represent the men and women of our department and the city. Um, in front of you, we gave you a packet. It kind of has information describing our department. If any of you all ever want more information, please feel free to contact me, and we can sit down and go over everything individually and give you a tour of the police department and other facilities uh, that are under our care. Uh, we're going to go right into the... Uh, police budget and stuff. If you'll, you'll look at uh, over the last five years from 2019 through 2023, we have roughly about a 19% increase over that five year period. Roughly comes out to about 3.8% per year. Uh, obviously 2021 and 2022, cost of everything in society has gone up, so everybody's uh, budgets are gonna see an impact uh, with the cost of goods and services and so forth. How's your head count? You know roughly? What's over that? that? Your head count? I have 53 sworn. We're about 69 personnel in, in total with the 16 uh, civilian positions we have. We also have an additional seven uh, part-time uh, crossing guards. Okay. And that's over the five-year period? I, we I, have not increased in personnel okay. uh, that's right. in, during that five-year period. Correct. We're, we've been at 53. I don't have the exact date when we 
since we've had 53 sworn uh, and other positions. So, yeah, I think we added one more crossing guard position a couple of years back, right, Ron? The seventh crossing yeah. guard position was a few Correct. years back. Um, so, but I hope that answered your questions. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, on the next slide here, you can see a comparison from 2022 to 2023, and the largest portion of our budget increase this year. Uh, you know, there's roughly about $800,000 over last year's budget. About $600,000 is right here on this screen uh, between the personnel and operating. Uh, you're looking at a 4.6% increase in our personnel. Uh, you know, these are all finance calculations that come over with the contract agreement that we have with the PBA, and we go through a three-year contract. We're coming up to 2023 will be the last year of that contract, so we'll start negotiations again in January uh, for, the, for the next three-year uh, contract. Of that total number, how many are covered by the contract? So our, we have 53 sworn officers, myself, and the two majors are not covered under the contract. Okay. Uh, every other officer is covered under the contract. Good. Got it. Perfect. Okay. Uh, vehicle maintenance budgets, and you can see, you know, over the, over the years, uh, that increase is going to be going up. We have 82 vehicles. Now, when we say vehicles, uh, 46 marked patrol vehicles, uh, 22 unmarked, plus we also have message boards, so you'll see those put up around town all over the place. Uh, in that, we also have trailers. Uh, one of the trailers that we're talking about there is our speed display board, so we'll get that out there to, get, to gather information for us to use data because uh, we're data-driven on our traffic enforcement efforts and where we should be placing our resources because we can't be everywhere all the time, so we try to look at the data and collect that information. We also have a Zodiac, which is a, a rubber-sided boat. Uh, that's really primarily for our SWAT team and others uh, if there's any water rescues that we need to do or getting into tighter areas. And a John boat that we acquired a couple years back during a, actually a hurricane event, uh, went and purchased that to have it available in case we do have major flooding out in the areas where we cannot get to. And having a metal John boat you know, would be ideal as opposed to putting a Zodiac in with all the tree branches that'll be down and everything else that'll be down during a hurricane and after that kind of an event. So uh, that's, those are the two uh, boats that we have available to us. Next screen. Uh, capital outlay, there's only one, well, I say one item, uh, one project that's in there. It's uh, new drones that we're going to have to get. We currently do have drones. However, uh, the state has changed the mandate for law enforcement and municipalities as a whole is what manufacturer we have to use. So it kind of came out of left field to everybody. Uh, so we're not going to be able to use the ones that we currently have. Uh, so we have to go out and purchase a uh, new one. So we're going to be looking at three at $8,000 each. Uh, this way we could have one on the uh, A shift or, of our patrol units and the B shift and have those available with the operators, plus the other one will be available for our traffic homicide units, SWAT team, and other uh, specialty units. What happens if one crashes? Is that under insurance? Uh, well, we have maintenance agreements and stuff, then I'd have to look at it. That, that would be probably covered under the insurance and maintenance. Yes. Yeah. This is com coming off of my memory, so I preface it, you know, memory could be wrong here. Uh, the cams. Body cameras. We have Body them. cams. Yep. I know we have them, and I recall it last year from an IT perspective, there was a need to be able to save those uh, and it might have been IT was looking for a head count. In other words, the cameras that are taking, you can't just discard them. You need correct. to correct all that information is downloaded daily uh, onto our, our uh, what's it, watch guard, correct? The watch guard system that we have, and that information is kept up on the servers, uh, and then they'll br bring it in and over to specific cases. Right. So if it's involved in a criminal case, then we're going to make it part of evidence and doing it that way. Other than that, I believe it's a 30-day hold on them? 90-day hold on them. Uh, 90, you have to hold the film for, for 90, 90 days. days. Yes, yeah. That's under state statute. Uh, 119, Chapter 119 governs uh, public records law, so we have to look at those things unless they have some evidentiary value to us right. or right. historical value. So you just need to maintain them for 90 days? Correct. Wow. Yep. So that's like any other camera systems that we have in the city that they're on a 90-day loop, yes. so that information gets held and stuff. So, yeah. 
that's all through the IT department. Ours are held internally in, in our building because, again, the nature of what our body cameras catch, capture, we're going into people's homes and such. Uh, so a lot of that stuff is not public record on, under 119. So we have to review all of those. And I think what you might be referring to is what we talked about, uh, you know, where I was looking for, when you brought up positions last, last time, I was looking for a position for uh, a digital evidence technician position because we know that with the body-worn cameras, that's going to be uh, a lot of requests for those things, and it's right. time consuming because for officer hours, not just for a one hour video, you have to sit there and watch that entire one hour video, then redact everything out of it, then go back, watch it again, and make sure that you redacted everything. So now you're looking at two to three hour project for one person on one public records request. Uh, so those are, you know, manpower intensive. Uh, so I think that might have been one of those things that you were trying to bring back to your memory there. And has it has it been working up to your satisfaction? Well, we, di we didn't get a, the, any of those positions that we were looking for. Uh, I do have an officer assigned to that under Major Ruggiero, uh, and he oversees and makes sure that all the processes are done, and we're doing an excellent job uh, with w what we have right now. Okay. Thank you. Um, up here on the revenue portion of it, you'll see some of the revenues that do come in. So on our off-duty uh, pay, you'll see a $74,000 uh, line item. Though we have to pay the officers if they work an off-duty detail and it's paid by the event. We pay the officers, then we collect from the individual. So like, let's say the Merchants Association is having an event downtown, they needed four officers, We're gonna, they get a minimum of three hours, we're gonna get paid by them, then we, the city bills the Merchants Depart uh, Association, that comes back and goes back into the accounts and uh, Ron's people take care of that. So that kind of, that 74,000 right there, it's on there, but it's probably coming back to the city uh, afterwards. But we have to have that line item in there for us and normally that's pretty close to being right on the money, right, Ron? Correct. Uh, then, it's, then there's another about $392,812 that we recoup from the uh, school board annually. We have a, a contract agreement with them. We provide six SROs, two out at the high school, one at the middle school, and one at each of our three elementary schools. Uh, re we are required by state statute to have uh, an armed individual in every school. Uh, so we elect to use police officers because we want them there to be partners in the community. Mm -hmm. Some communities elect to have what they call guardians. Uh, they, they're there for one purpose and one purpose only. Our SROs are there for a multitude of uh, things and take care of problems and working with the principals at the schools uh, on a daily basis as well as the parents and students for you know quality of life issues and any other safety factors that come up there. Certainly a timely issue. Uh, you know, it's a very sad time in society when you've seen things like in Texas and, and all, all other areas around the country. But I would say that I know in Florida, you know, I can't speak for other areas. I don't know what their training is like or what they do. But here in Florida, we are well ahead of the curve, uh, and especially after uh, the Parkland shooting. The Parkland Commission, which our sheriff was uh, actually the chairperson on, a lot of those recommendations came out of that, on that event. Uh, because certain things needed to change too. We were ahead of the curve here in our city. We already had an SRO assigned to the three elementary schools. He floated around to all three of them. Uh, so we were kind of ahead of most places that had nobody looking at, uh, at the elementary schools. And then that opportunity came about, we were able to get uh, additional personnel to go, go out to the schools. Question is, are the schools, the Florida law, a single access or well I won't go into security plans of every school and everything right. because yeah, every school is different to. they're not all designed exactly the same okay. they try to limit them as best they can um, you know how old the school is and wide open a campus but they usually try to have only so many access points and trying to get them in there but some are you know fences and things of that nature or other barriers and physical barriers so uh, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, if somebody wants to get in places, they'll try to figure something out or some other way. But uh, we work excellent with all the school administration here and as well as down county and doing uh, evaluation plans at the beginning of each school year uh, with our SROs and the school administration and making any recommendations for safety on campus. 
the other portion there, $6,000 roughly comes back from the sheriff's office with our uh, partnership with the uh, sheriff's office narcotics unit. However, most of this year I had to pull the uh, officer, uh, the detective out of there because of manpower shortages. Uh, you know, right now I'm having some manpower shortages uh, with a couple that were out long term with COVID and so on, so on and so forth. Still have one out, been out for almost a year now with uh, dealing with their, the effects of that. So, uh, you know, we're doing the best we can with the manpower issues that we have. Um, you know, again, I did present that at a previous, uh, at last year's uh, budget advisory. One year. One year? One year, somebody's been out for... Oh, almost, yeah, almost a full year. So does that mean we need another person? Well, we can't. But it's, I don't, just can't just fill positions that I don't have. I, I'm allocated so many positions. That one, he's filling that position where he's, you know, under workers' comp, but still a position we have filled. Um, during the, uh, these are the, oh, we're going into code enforcement now. There we go. Our code enforcement budget for that submitted is one, 147408 Obviously, a little increase. Uh, we just got some, for me, sad news. <laughs> Beth Hughes is uh, resigning from the code enforcement uh, position, so we'll be out looking for a new uh, code enforcement officer. She's taking a position with the county uh, code enforcement uh, office. And um, so we'll be looking for a new code enforcement officer in the interim. I'll be uh, assigning a police officer to that. So now that just takes another body away from where I can do stuff. So Covering it. Yep. Which you rob Peter to pay Paul, right? So we do what we can do, but it'll all work out, and uh, you know we'll find the best person to fill that position, uh, a civilian position, which it is. Um, any questions on code enforcement? Any idea why the person left? Uh, well, you know, obviously uh, pay increase and right. and opportunity, and what she said was opportunities. It wasn't just pay alone. Uh, but opportunities for career advancements because here she's at the highest position in that department. She, is, she is the code enforcement officer, but at the county there was other opportunities that she could branch off on and so forth. So, you know, it, it's not always about money, but it's about money and it's about opportunities too. So, I, you know, completely understood that and wish her the best. I have to ask the question. I mean, just going back, I'm just I'm a retired teacher, and if I was on disability for that long, there would be a sub in my classroom. You have substitutes available. Uh, I'm there, really so. concerned that you're yeah. down a man. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, I mean, we, we do substitute by paying overtime. That's how we do it. Uh, you know, so we'll work with that. We're working with the workers' comp people, uh, the human resources department's on the phone with them constantly and working with them on seeing how we could best suit the individual, too. And our needs, you know, we do do cover it, but you'll see that that's why our overtime rate has increased some because we have to backfill those slots. Whether I pay somebody else or just pay overtime to cover it, we're getting an increase someplace in, in cost, whether it's a salary increase or overtime increase. So is there a standard that says so many police officers per number of citizens? Is there something like that? Well, there, there is the, the, the FBI has what they call a ratio of, I think it's 2.4 per thousand is the average uh, for a mid-sized department. Uh, throughout the country. Uh, I think we are right around 2.1, I think, right now per thousand, somewhere around there. Uh, I don't have the number right off the top of my head, but I think it's 2.1, 2.3. So we're there, but with the population growth that we're having and expecting, then you could look at those numbers to get down even further away from that 2.4. So, you know, I, I think in the packet that... 400-unit apartment complex going up that would have two... Well, we all already have Ikea or Ikaria, I can never pronounce that one, Ikea. <laughs> Ikaria Apartments. Yeah, that, Ikea's a store, yeah. So, but, you know, with the increases of population in any of those, plus subdivisions going up on the North Bend, subdivision up on the other side of the, the river, and uh, a few others going up on the uh, east side. So, you know, we can expect some population growth, and I think uh, in a proposal I put together last year uh, where I asked for the, that one body that you were talking about and six additional officers to get to the to stay pretty productive, close to that 2.4 uh, ratio per thousand served uh, based on the population growth of our city over the that time last year, moving forward to, a, I think I did a three-year projection. So are you still needing positions or are you okay right now? 
Well, I manage every day, and you know, but it's you know, overtime costs a lot of money getting positions filled, you know, and then fill in off-duty details and special events, and it gets trying at times. Yeah. But we manage very well every day. I got my right. lesson a few years ago from your predecessor. Mm -hmm. It was all fit for bear. There's so much overtime, you know. Come on. Yeah. But now I understand. You really have a lot of events. Yes, and and here again, like, and I know I sat in here with my predecessor, uh, Chief Coach, when he talked to you about that, and we talked about unexpected events. We can't predict a hurricane what it's going to do and how much overtime it's going to cost us or how many days we're going to be stuck in a facility and we're paying our officers 24 hours a day and whether or not Ron's ever going to see the reimbursement from the federal money because there's no guarantee unless the state of emergency is declared and we have we're impacted but we're there preparing for it regardless police and right. fire and public works and stuff so we're there 24 hours a day seven days a week until the city's no longer in that threat zone uh, and that costs money that's just hurricanes. Then I have, you know, death investigations or anything else, more serious crimes that'll take a lot of detectives and a lot of manpower uh, to, to allocate towards that. And that's a lot of overtime that comes out of those types of things. And those come up, you know, a couple of years back, I had a triple homicide that had to send people out of state all over the place and searching for individuals. So, you know, that can come up at any time, any day, and that's why our overtime budget fl fluctuates so much, and some, sometimes it's never not near enough. I can't imagine any year that we ever came in well under. Uh, we're usually right around that number. I know that the budget advisory actually had increased it about two years ago, and uh, you know, making it a little closer to that for us in fire, and you know, it was very, very, very well appreciated. Yeah. It, it is, yeah. it, you know, and how do you, how you manage it, you know, and I'm putting out, emails to my two majors telling them, hey, my, we're at 46% of the year, but I'm at 51% of my overtime budget. Let's try, start looking at everything a little closer. So, you know, they do a great job at doing that, but we are never going to stop doing what we need to do, and m money will not be the obstacle in serving the citizens. Excellent. Okay. Three-minute response time to my house three times. Excellent. Or less. It was very good. Good. Thank you very much. Um, where are we at now? Federal equitable sharing. Kind of good, can throw both of these things into the one account there. Federal equitable sharing comes from our DAGs, from our partnership with the DEA, uh, the Drug Enforcement Agency. Uh, so the money's come in there. We use that money to try to fund our SWAT team, canine unit, and some additional patrol stuff, our website, maintenance, and things like that come out of that annually. That money comes in periodically. Sometimes it's faster, sometimes it's slower. Uh, a few years back, it was non-existent coming in because federal government said we're putting a hold on that all. Uh, but we are seeing that trickle in a little bit more now, too. And then we also have a, a, a local fund, too. Uh, the, the other uh, plan, I forget which one what was that one? Call around the uh, confiscated trust. Confiscated fund. trust fund. Thank you. Couldn't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, that one's from the local money I talked to you about, coming from the sheriff's office with our partner with ship with them and what they call HIDA. It's a high drug enforcement area, but that's more localized here in Pinellas County, and we're doing it Pinellas County. But the DEA task force out of Tampa, because again, we all are infected, affected and infected, I guess, uh, by the drug uh, that come in from all over. It's not just the Tarpon Springs or Pinellas County issue. We're on the border with Pasco County, uh, Hillsborough County to, to West, so we're working in cooperation with every uh, agency that we can and being partners with everybody because it's, it's gonna take all of us to have any effect on, on the illegal uh, drug trade that's coming in and ruining people's lives and killing far too many people right now, especially with the fentanyl and uh, the tragedies that you see there, and you know, are those you seeing an increase um, I know it's in death related deaths with fentanyl? Absolutely. I mean, oh, uh, over these past couple of years, I as many overdoses already this year as we had all of last year. Yeah. Wow. So, and you know, 
We, we supply all our officers with Narcan. Narcan's a, a nasal spray that they can get in there. If they get in there and there's agonal breathing, they're laboring for breath and there's some type of sign lab, they can give that to them and it usually recuperates that individual rather quickly. So we've pro and we've saved quite a number of people. So that number could have been even higher if we didn't have that uh, resource available to them. And we get that through the medical director's office uh, with the county, and that's a countywide project uh, that everybody's uh, involved in. Um, you know, so the numbers could be far worse. And uh, but we try our best to do and you know be there as quickly as possible. Just like you're saying. Uh, uh, about the officers getting there in a timely fashion, you know, and then I get to listen to other people call me and tell me, why are your police going so fast? Well, it's, if you're, they're coming to you, I think you want them getting there faster. So, uh, you know, so th th those are all the things that, would, you know, en encompass that. Uh, and hopefully that answers some of the questions with the federal equitable sharing as well as the uh, other fund. And I think that's it for Just all I have. I ask is there any plans to revive the uh, Citizens Academy? It actually starts. <coughs> yes, it'll be starting in August. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. For anybody. I'm here. signed up. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> yep. We're still taking What made me trigger me when you talked about the canine. Right. I, can, <laughs> I can vision that. <laughs> uh, now, the whole thing is. It's if you want to upstairs. wear the arm pad, I'll let you, you get you. No, 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 no. <laughs> take your take I'm, I'm busy that night. <laughs> I have a little dog. She's not even allowed to nip. Okay. Um, well, if there's any other questions I could answer for you while I'm here, and if not, I'm always available. Give me a call. Come by for a cup of coffee, and we'll sit down and talk and answer any and all questions you ever had. Oh, thank you. So I shouldn't ask you the question, how many hurricanes have you projected in this place. Have I projected? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it, you know, starting off it as an early season, so we pray zero. Yeah. You know, that's 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 the hopeful number. That's but, the hope. You know. Okay, any any questions? Okay. Well, y'all have a great Thank day. You. Thank you. Thank you. Now comes the good stuff. <laughs> hey, I heard that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's for last night. <laughs> so we have Irene uh, Jacobs, our city clerk. All right. Good afternoon. Irene Jacobs, city clerk and collector. Uh, the clerk's office consists of the city clerk's budget. That's out of the general fund. And it also consists of the collection budget, um, which is out of the water and sewer fund. The city clerk's budget can be found on pages 44 through 47. The clerk's operating budget is approximately $71,115 and was increased, uh, which is included in this figure, was increased by $14,325 due to election cost increases. Election uh, expenses are about 65.5% uh, of our overall operating budget for the clerk's office and are made up through various funds for postage, professional services, operating supplies, legal ads, and so forth. Um, election cost estimates for next year are approximately $38,602 for a same day election uh, with other municipalities. And in addition to those costs, there's other such costs that range between three to $8,000 for legal uh, publications, uh, bilingual language compliances, um, uh, and uh, reprinting of ballot and mail ballots, uh, postage, and poll place change mailers. Um, with an in conjunction election, which is basically an election that's tacked on with um, a county or federal election, um, the estimated cost uh, for next year are between $3,300 and $6,800, depending if it's a one or two card printed ballot. Uh, some of the other large items that make up the clerk's operating budget um, are recording fees, code book supplements, and copier printer rental and legal ads. Um, did you want me to go on and finish collections, or do you want me to s uh, stop in case there's questions in on the clerk's side? Let's give it a pause. Give you, we'll give you a rest here for a few seconds.
Mm. The roll roll better. That's not good. Yeah, no, it's that. Nothing from my side. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. On the collection side, uh, that could be found on pages 246 to 248. The collection's operating budget is approximately $41,507, with one of our highest expenses at 32.8% for support and maintenance um, for our interactive voice recognition system. This is the, our phone system that allows customers a different option to make payments by phone 24-7 in real time to their accounts. The second highest expense is approximately 24.3% of, uh, of our budget. And that's for postage of delinquent letters. And uh, this fee you'll see is taken out of non-departmental and then um, throughout the year. And at the end of the year, it's uh, put back and taken out of our budget as a whole. Um, these two items make over 57% of our overall collection operating budget. Um, as for capture, capital outlay, which is now under the operating system, the only thing we've increased in this budget was twenty. Uh, was $2,175, and that was uh, to help fund uh, computers and monitor replacements needed in the, on that side. Um, other than that, for machinery, we've been pretty lucky. Um, we... Um, if you ask my staff, uh, sometimes they're not too happy about it, but we keep machines until they break <laughs> or there's no longer any parts. And we've been fortunate to plan once we start finding it difficulty to find uh, parts for replacement or repair. Uh, since COVID. What types of machine, copying machines or. Uh, yeah, microfilm readers, yeah. such things like that. Uh, since COVID, it's, it has been challenging at times to fill vacancies, causing additional workloads. Uh, and sometimes over time to go up. Uh, but my office continues to look at ways to streamline processes, maintain compatible convenience fees and payment options, as well as looking at ways for the clerk side to improve time management and software for better transparencies and efficiencies in records management and minutes for our residents. Um, How's your staff level right now? Right Is now we're down two positions. Uh, we're only an office of the, on the collection side, we have four. And we're down a person on that side. And on the clerk side, including myself and Michelle, we have four and we're also down a position on that side. Um, hopefully we'll be interviewing uh, this week for the collection side. Um, on the records management side, we're missing our record specialist position. And there again, uh, the person left for higher pay wages over a year ago and we haven't been able to replace that. Uh, we've had several attempts and either they, we have a, a very slim, for, for the position for that software and the certification for that software, the pay scale isn't. Uh, so it's basically, you, could, you can get someone that doesn't have that certification, but then you're giving them the training and then they move on because to get that training, if you have that training, you can get a better, you know, a higher, Pay. Which, which software? It's on base is what we use. Right. Um, we are looking at ways to see, you know, back, we've had it since 2000, I believe. We, we do have a committee looking at, you know, is it feasible to change that? Because we're, we're looking at things to, you know, for, to streamline processes, such as, you know, looking at agenda management, minutes, things like that, that uh, take a lot of time that would, be more efficient running through one system. And a lot of people use a certain type of software. Um, OnBase is more of a... It's the Cadillac, it's the best. Yeah, it, but it's for the size of our municipality, yes. And it, so it's, um, you don't find a lot of people certified in that. So you're looking for Granica, what are you looking for on the agenda side? Um, we, we haven't chosen, we're still looking at, um, interviewing and getting demos and and things that would be compatible and uh, not a lot of people are compatible with on base is what we're finding to um, and uh, you know in the older days we used to have so when when we have a records management issue you know you have to see is it feasible to migrate something 
So uh, I'm still old school, so I believe in you can still take a roll of film, microfilm, and hold it up if you didn't have a reader. Um, but uh, so we still have fiche and microfilm, and um, we have an old uh, home written program uh, that we didn't know at the time was going to pass, you know, uh, uh, 2000 uh, Y2K. So uh, so now you know we have like if it's something. Uh, Michelle has been, our deputy city clerk has been here uh, going on 36 years, and I'm 33 going on 34. So we have a lot of institutional knowledge. Um, but if you're looking for a records request, if it's prior to 2000, we have to go look in one system. And if it's after 2000, we look in on base. Um, so we're trying to find something that, you know, and not have multiple systems that we're looking um, for. And I encourage everybody, uh, like I said, the Citizens Academy um, is where residents, we it's free of charge. Um, we usually have 25 a class. We were doing two a year. And then with COVID, we kind of had to uh, cease that. We're starting back up and we're gonna do at least one a year right now. And I uh, encourage all, we've had many board members that have come because of that, um, some employment because of that. And um, it's a really- No, you can't harm me. <laughs> <laughs> a great program to, um, to get a more in-depth- uh, You've got your own base certificate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it sounds like I could demand whatever I wanted because there's so few out there. A more in-depth, uh, you know, uh, look at the city and the and the works of the city. Yeah, I should probably do that. It's a great program. Is it? Oh yeah, it's fantastic. Yep. Fun. You Interesting. Learn so much. Yeah. Look forward to the next week, and you do learn. And it's for new residents and existing. It's not directed toward you. You can you can gain a lot of knowledge. Okay. It previously was a requirement to serve on the board, on a board, wasn't it? That you no. had to go through? No, it, wasn't. no, it wasn't a requirement, but a lot of the board started um, even, you know, as employees. I think uh, when we put the, uh, this program together, it was through a suggestion of a commissioner who did um, uh, the Pinellas County Leadership Program, which is a big fee, and you have to pay to do that one. Um, and, and look trying to condense some of these programs and what they were gonna be because we go to different locations um, and visit during that program. Um, and there was a lot of things, even I had been here for years, multiple years, you know, um, that I thought, they do that? <laughs> I, I mean, I didn't know that that was, like, I'll give you an example, like the wastewater treatment plant. I didn't know that it was so technical and it's all the testing they do, and it's like a chemistry lab, and, and, and all the requirements. So I think that it's good for employees to go through two new hires because then they can s understand it's not just they're cleaning the water. It's, you know, all the regulations, all the oh. testing, all the, you know, everything else that goes in it. Excellent. Any budget-related questions? Okay, as usual, excellent presentation. Well, thank you. Somehow for you don't change. look like the HR uh, representative. I, I didn't download the right things, apparently. Uh, you, you do it all? I need to. Yes, I'm not Jane, the HR director. You're skipping HR. Jane asked, another commitment came up, and so she called me yesterday and said if she could, she wanted to switch to the 16th, so. Okay. So you're stuck with me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Want to make this short? Just cut your budget by 10%? <laughs> sure, just go right ahead. I'll, I'll find it somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, probably, you're a magician. You'll find it. Okay. Ron Herring, finance director. Uh, how are you doing today? Um, let's go over the finance department budget on page 15. And um, so we got seven employees of the finance department. They're just right across the hall over here. Shane's one of them. 
I'm very fortunate to have such a good staff. I, I did lose two members just in the last few months. Uh, people found out they could work remote. One lived in Tampa, till, Tampa so that was a farther drive. Um, fortunately, we replaced her with somebody from this board whose first day is today. So, yes. you, you know, Susan's back there as our new accounting manager. So yeah, they do. In my office. And I was going to say, <laughs> she's short a person because we took her. <laughs> so we're very, <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, no, I'm not. But <laughs> that's okay. that's they seem to be good. hopefully both working out great. Um, so that's why in the personnel area, you'll see some changes because some of the salary changes some, along with the 3% the funding increase. You'll see health, life, and health insurance went down some. You wonder, well, how did we, did we budget 10%? Well, the couple people that left had family coverage, so we're not paying for that for their family. One had family coverage and one had spouse coverage, which the city helps pay a portion of that. So that reduced that. Um, travel expense, as you can see, we got 3,500. We haven't really, haven't spent much, but one of our big conferences is at the end of June right now, and I know my assistant and myself are going there. And probably we budget for probably a third and maybe a fourth person, which might be Miss Hales might be going next year. So that's why we haven't spent that much because the conference is at the end of June. Um, you might see something, I wonder, maybe I should explain it, something called interdepartmental allocation. You might see it there and might wonder what this is and you'll see a negative amount. It, what we are trying, what we do with that, the library department and the fire department we get money back from, from the county for those departments. So we try to, what we do, we use a, we have a calculation of trying to charge those departments, which increases our reimbursement from the county for police and fire. So our work, as far as for the police and fire departments, we charge those departments, but then we credit this department. And using the same calculation we had this year, we saw a decrease. I'm not sure it was COVID related, but one of our calculations is number of purchase orders and uh, that we use. So there was less of them, which, and that's why our budget increased because that credit was less this year. Um, I'm point, letting that sink in. <laughs> take your time. I, 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 I got it, okay. <laughs> uh, it's not you. Doing your magic act. No. We use the same calculation of, you know, charge those departments, but I'd say it came into a, le a less of a charge to the library and fire departments. Yep. So it's less of a credit to us, which increased our budget in the operating category there. Got it. Um, point 52 went up. We got a new computer. And then uh, point 55 training. Again, that's all part of our conferences that are. Um, Usually later in the year, like I say, this one's in, at the end of June. Where are your conferences? Just out of curiosity. Orlando. Where else? Not uh, hardly a boom dog. <laughs> okay. um, I don't know if you have any questions on the finance department. The major difference is that interdepartmental allocation largely, right? Or what, is there any other major differences? That no, that's that's a major difference. And I think I'm, I'm part of I'm wondering if it's because last year was COVID related and we le had less transactions. I thought about maybe doing an average instead of just using last year. So we were th still thinking about doing that. You know, but I just wanted to be consistent with how we did it the, the last few years we've been doing this. So I'm, yeah, so I'm yeah. still think about revisiting that, and maybe I should use an average over the last three or five years. Think about revisiting. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'll it do could that. be a pocket. Yeah. I just want to make sure, that, you know, if I'm taking more of a credit, that means there's less of a charge to police, to the library and right. fire departments, which means less expenses, which means less reimbursement. Correct. You got it there. I, I got that. Finally figured out that chain. Yeah. I have a general question about just the salary increases, just so I can understand. The last meeting we talked about, we were waiting on the millages to come in to see kind of where things landed, and you had given everybody guidance on the increases, but that that might be different once we got those rates, right? So when everybody includes their sal their increases in salaries, is that based on the guidance, and then this might change based on millages, or is 
Well, we 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 funded we funded a three percent increase. Okay. Except for police and fire, the ones in their union contracts, that's based on their contracts. The, their percentage was a little different, but we funded three percent. We, we I estimated the, the you're talking about the millage, the taxable values. Yeah, like we had last meeting, we talked about it, when certain things came in, that amount might be raised. Yes. I didn't know where that I, was in this mix. I estimated a 5% increase in the taxable values for the city. We average about 6%. We just got the estimate yesterday. It's 12.86%. Oh, wow. So it almost doubled. It's, I haven't seen it that high in, I think, forever. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, but that's an estimate. The truly certified values come July 1st, but there's usually not much difference between the estimate. That's a huge difference. Yeah. It's about, it's about another $700,000 yeah. of revenue that's available. 25 or so a point or that's, something like that, if I remember. So, yeah. Good memory. <laughs> so, I'm just trying to figure out, so these numbers that we're seeing here, is if, like, is this what they're asking for as approved, or will there be potential changes? Because I know you would, everybody had wanted to increase wages a little bit more because of the current environment. It's hard to find people, right. all that. Right. There will be another addition of the budget. There's probably going to be two or three more. And Iteration. we're going to do another one, yeah. you know, for the board, probably after we go through your meetings. The city manager wants to have a meeting with the board of commissioners to find out their priorities. I think a meeting in June. And uh, we, so we will have more additions of the budget. There is a talk of putting in funding a 5% increase instead of the 3% for everybody. So everybody's using the 3% here? We just we fund it as a funding mechanism. We funded the 3%. Okay. You I just wanted to make sure I understood how that and, shook, shook out here. Right. Uh, said, but truthfully, that ends up being right. at the end, you see what can right. reasonably and I, and I think what the city manager, he's been meeting with us, other city managers, and they're seeing where a lot of cities are giving, looking towards 5%. So we're that's why. So we don't want to fall behind and lose people. So we're saying maybe we need to f go ahead. You know, since the taxable values went up, let's in the next edition of the and budget. You could probably, off the top of your head, say how much more it would be at four percent and five percent. Five percent would be another hundred eighty thousand dollars. How much? Hundred eighty thousand dollars. Another. I mean, was it one percent or moving to five? To go from three percent to five percent okay. is another hundred eighty thousand dollars of that of that additional revenue we will have from the taxable value increase. Do you have to put the insurance on top of that then? We've already got the insurance budget. You're talking health insurance. Uh, health we, insurance. What did you hit at ten percent? Ten percent. That's and we're. That's all of the, that's the health insurance? Health, life, and dental, we've budgeted a 10% increase. We don't oh, know that. HR the, related. Yeah, we budgeted an estimate. We were not going to probably know the premium until August, what it's going to end up being for that. Historically, Ron has been relatively conservative. You've never overshot that much from your district. For the health insurance? Or? Yeah. Yeah, and from what I talked to, You're good I friends. talked to Jane, the HR director, and she has that it might come in less. I don't know if you remember last year was zero. Yes. We didn't have an increase, so it might come under However, the ten percent. We did. Was it last year or the year before? Went out and competitively shopped it. I can't remember. Correct, and I think we had a two percent decrease. Right. That two years ago. Last year, no increase, and uh, we're waiting to find out for this year. It always helps to keep them keep on, on the toes, guard, knowing that you will. That you're looking, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Is there any other area that we should be looking at? I, I, I'm segueing, like insurance or any other we should competitively shop on. In your mind, that we haven't looked at for. Well, the last I think five they years. well they've been talking about doing the property insurance. Right. And looking at, I think Jane is looking into it, our HR director. Right now, I've budgeted a 10% increase, not knowing what the premiums are going to be. So th there is talk that she's looking into that. Okay. It's just a good, good practice. Yeah. Not if you don't competitively shop something every few right. years. Right. You don't know if you can you, do better. You don't know. Yeah. 
and just letting them know that you will shop it out periodically keeps them keeps on their toes a huh? little fine too. <laughs> yeah, okay. Very good. Sorry for the interruption. Go ahead. Back to your trend of thought. No, it's your committee. <laughs> <laughs> you, is everybody good with the finance department or? Yeah, take a look at those areas. Again, I know uh, being consistent is usually good, but maybe it's not, you know, on the 90, on the bill outs, the inter... Oh, the inter department allocation? Yeah, take a look at that. Yeah, we were just been so busy just trying to get the budget books you get, together. You we did the same somewhere. way, but in the back of my mind, I'm going on a budget. You know, we need to look at that and stuff. And just, yeah. When I was looking at it just a couple of days ago, I go, what's, you know, and I just, I noticed purchase orders were less, and that's how we base it on how many purchase orders did fire department have compared to the total city. And so the percentage was less, which for both uh, fire and library, which caused that charge out to be right. less. So I think maybe I need to just revisit it, get more of an average so we can be more consistent. Otherwise, even the county might say, well, how come you all of a sudden went down here and that's, you might go back up a big amount next year? So I might have okay. to level it off here. Good. Any other questions on the finance? So uh, headcount-wise, you're still one short? No, I mean, right now you're you're okay. We're fully staffed now since Miss Hale started today. Okay. okay. You know, if you want to add another one, that's. I good. didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I come from a historical background. You got to bleed. You got to be up to here before a head count is added. <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> I'll tell you sometime. Okay. Any other? Questions for finance. I do have a couple other departments. Uh, I know you do. Okay, I, I didn't know. I was, I was segueing. You go, go ahead on to the other departments. Okay, I am over the, the uh, finances over the utility billing department. We've got page two thirty nine, has a utility billing staff. You know, we've got three positions down there. Salaries, a little bit of, a, of an adjustment. We had uh, some new people down there. Uh, you'll notice point thirty four. we decreased to $10,000 because we had somebody who was a temp being charged there who decided finally to work full-time. So we were able to, you know, re we still wanted to reduce that because we never know if we're going to lose somebody. So we're leaving the $10,000 there. But we, that's why we had some salary changes up under the personnel category. Um, don't really have much else of a budget. There is some travel, but they've got a conference <coughs> coming up. Um, some of the stuff that I know there's some, I noticed some expenses were a little on the low side, but I noticed we haven't got all the bills in, so we don't have like a whole half a year of some of the invoices on some of the other operating supplies. Um, in point 52, they are having some another computers and some monitors as part of the increase to that department. Anything else? Any questions on utility billing? Anybody? Not for me. You're good. Okay, the next department after that is meter readers on page 242. Um, meter readers. Meter readers. We've got three meter readers. Meter technicians. Um, <coughs> we're talking about water meters? Yes. Yeah, the water meter readers. And repairs them, takes care of them. Uh, personnel is just really right on at the 3% of salary increase and then the health insurance. Um, they do have some repairs. Some of their major repairs are for their handheld devices and stuff that they, they take care of down there. That's part of the point fifty two for the operating. Um, are, are most residents on a hand, uh, meet, uh, with the remote meter reading? I think the city's gotten about 70% of the cities on the automated where they would drive by and they can yes. pick up the readings and stuff. Okay. So they're still, we're, we're allocating money every year to gradually try to get the city to 100%. 
Um, fuel cost increase was another category it went up, but of course we've budgeted a, for all across all departments, you know, the increase in the fuel cost. I think last year I budgeted at three dollars a gallon. This year I'm, I'm at, I think at four four ninety. I think is what I've gotten there. Not knowing what the price of fuel is going to be. But, but. Nobody does. But they don't have too much else. I don't know if you have any other questions on meter readers. So four ninety is kind of what you're targeting. Yeah, we have a spreadsheet. I mean, you got to budget it. We had spreadsheets and calculations, and going back to the history and the, and the averages, and just trying to say, you know, what's yeah. It, yeah, yeah, you I, can throw away history. It's going to be the hit or, it's going to be hit or miss. I don't know. Yeah. What to, sometimes you have to make a value judgment. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> that's where Ron's crystal ball. Either that, or we're just start taking the cars away from like the building director. <laughs> Do we are we on electrical electric vehicles within the city? We have two of them we bought last year, totally electric vehicles. One is being used by Shannon in the building department. The other one is being used over in the water and sewer department. Cemetery. And there's a couple hybrids out there. Hybrids, I know. Scott's my neighbor, Scott Young. Yeah, he got I, his. I he he, he's hybrid. got his hybrid now, and I think the police department got a hybrid. Cemetery, yeah. And I think they're still looking. They got the sustainability committee, so I'm not sure if they'll be looking for other. Because even with meter reading, they've talked about, you know, getting electric vehicles for those guys to drive around. And I think the problem was that there wasn't a pickup truck yet because they need something to be able to right. separate the all their tools and stuff. So I think as soon as maybe they get a pickup truck, we might look into an electric vehicle for the meter readers. Any questions? No. Do you have any other areas under your domain? Or have we covered them all? That, that's it that are right under. Yeah. under so me. we're good with that 10% cut right off the top. And, uh, <laughs> I'm just, give just me that. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've covered all departments. HR is going to be. They're going to be in two weeks, next. along with everybody else. I've had this thought since the last meeting, and it didn't. I didn't. I didn't say it at that meeting. Right now, the the reserves are roughly how much? Eight point four, eight point five million special well, reserves. Well, there's reserves in, in every fund, and we've got like 32 separate funds. Depending, We have separate funds because some money is restricted for certain purposes, but I think you're talking about the general fund reserves. Yes, I am. We're right at $8.8 million. That's, 8 call, .8. that's called the unassigned fund balance. It's basically money that's not committed can be used for whatever the city designates like it for. emergencies, hur yeah, hurricanes. But we do have a fund balance policy that's 20%, which right now at 20% of the expenditures of the general fund brings it right around $5 million. So we're, okay. we're a little over $3.8 million over that minimum based on our fund balance policy. Well, that speaks to the financial strength of tarpon. Cor correct. You've got that reserve there. If you need it, you know, hurricanes and. Where my mind was churning even from the beginning. You know, I know that we're, we're getting the um, 12.8 million, 6.4 and 6 million. Is there any thought of increasing the special reserve? Let's admit the special reserves are kind of the squirrel putting acorns away for the bad day uh, to a degree. It's, it's, it's like safety and protection. Um, is there any thought that we might increase those reserves? Well, the increase, the, I mean, the ARPA money is separate from, from the general fund. Um, but you talk agree, increasing. But it's all, we have to admit it's all cash. I, I agree it's separate, but you have a normal amount that you usually spend for, I'm going to call it capital expenditures. You have another word. 
you take the R, the, R, uh, the 6.4, and is there any thought at the end of the day we might be putting additional money in the reserves? Well, the one way to do it is if since our taxable values are at 12.86%, you know, there's a, this additional $700,000 of revenue, you could say, okay, let's take a couple hundred thousand of this and reserve it off and increase our 8.8 .8 million to, to 9 million. I mean, there is that way of doing it. Okay. But it depends when the budget goes before know, the board, it's, it's whatever other, or, I think there's talk, or is there is positions in the future, some people looking for positions. I guess not the finance department though, but. <laughs> we, we did a fairly substantial, in my opinion, headcount last year. I know there were still wish lists out there, but let's just be careful in that area right. of, of, of the headcount, only because we're, we're living in good times where you know, twelve percent increase in the assessed value. You know, tax dollars are, have been going up. Is it your neat little chart last time? Well, I think I guess you know I was down at the county when the, the property appraisers, all our cities were there, and he said twelve point eight six percent. But you know, I hopefully they don't want to reduce the millage rate too much because that's going to reduce that. But like I say, I'd like to be able to put that money in in reserves. I would too. Yeah. 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 You, These are good times from that standpoint. So if well, we can, if we can convince up through the chain, maybe we should be putting some additional. We don't have to spend all that. We can Increase squirrel reserves, a little bit yeah. away. Just a little bit. Of well, it. and my concern is I, you know, I think finance director doom and gloom or something like that, but I, is there going to be recession in a year? I don't know if you remember, it's not the same situation, but 2008, 2009, and after that, this is the first time we saw taxable values go down. And of course, I meant our revenues went down, but luckily we had the reserves. The reserves, that's right. what I said. Yeah. Now, you know, my crystal ball isn't that clear on the future. If it is, we could all figure out what the stock market's going to do. <laughs> but it might be a good time to squirrel a little. I'm not saying. I like the number. I don't know why I hit on it. Five hundred million. Oh. Adding, adding to it. You said two or three. I said five hundred. I'm all for that. I, you know, if the if the committee here says you know, you know, you have excess revenues, if you oh, yeah, some, we can make a recommendation oh, yeah. that you want to be able to three million adding on top of the eight or wait, what what are we talking? Oh, about? We're talking about hundreds of thousands. Okay. Probably. Yeah, the tax. The tax property tax base is not sustainable. Anybody really knows that. This is totally inflationary, and it's very temporary, and in the bottom is going to drop out. I, I guess I just say things how, it, how yep. it is. I'm hoping so it doesn't drop out. this is a period where I agree with you 100%. I, I mean, I wish I, you had the chart, but Ron showed a great graph at the last week. The tax assess value. Well, it showed that dip that went down, and I think the low point was 2013 of taxable values. And right. Of course, the revenues, that was our low point, too, and it gradually we've gone back up, you know, yeah. since then. I just would like us to get of the mentality, us, the whole Tarpon Spring, of swirling some of that money Don't away. spend it Not all. Not everything has to be yeah. blown out. And I think I, I might have pointed out to you all at one of the meetings and stuff, but the fund balance minimum is based on the total expenditures. So we've been keeping the fund balance, the unassigned fund balance at 8.8 .8 million. It's been just hovering right there. Yeah. But our expenditures are going up. Right. So when you calculate that 20%, yeah, there, there's an that, increase needed. Yeah. That gap between the minimum and the 8.8 .8 million is getting closer now. We used to be down probably at 4 million. So you, we had 4.8 million of excess above that minimum. Now we're at 3.8. So it would be nice to increase it along with the expenditures that that fund balance minimum is based on. So that's something I'm seeing that's starting to happen as that expenditure total increases. And I, I'm fully cognizant. We need to get iterations before we know what that could potentially be. Yeah. Iterations of the budget. Right. 
you know, and something else that's coming up, you know, the cost of projects. Um, city clerk building, we budgeted 1.3 million. It looks like it's, it's gonna be maybe double that. So I've tried to, you know, we're trying to We didn't make spread the environment that. more plush than we originally. So a lot of things are costing more. City clerk building, uh, Mango Street, the next phase of that, everything's coming in more. So all of a sudden they're saying, well, Ron, we gotta find the money. So we're trying to take it across different funds, what are allowable funds to take it from to be able to cover those costs. Okay. With Again, part of it is just putting in the ARPA money too now. Say, okay, can we use part of the ARPA money for some of these projects now? Exactly. And that's to me. That's kind of a win. It's a it's a windfall that we haven't had. And is there, you know, if you're getting the windfall plus your normal ongoing capital. I call it capital expenditures. Right. Is there any way? that those two combined can be squeezed a little bit. Right. A little bit tight. So far they've the board has approved two point one million of the twelve point eight. Right. So I think hopefully soon they need to be trying to figure out okay, what's the next projects? Because we have to have the money obligated by December two thousand twenty four and all spent by December two thousand twenty six. Yeah, okay. I, I, I remember. So there's a time frame on said, spending dates. this money. Okay. Okay. Good. We're talking all the same. And I know it's a kind of vague discussion only because we need to get further in the budget process, you know, determining other right. other items. But, but like you say, if, if you have tax, you know, it's a good time to say, let's take some of this money and reserve it aside and maybe try to do some other things. But... Let's take part of it and reserve, increase that unassigned fund balance. The certified value comes in to July 1st. July 1st. 1st. And we're meeting before July 1st. So if we were to make a recommendation, it would be nice to know if it's certified value. It would be nice to know. Historically, it hasn't varied. It hasn't varied too much. Usually it's gone down a little bit, but last year it actually went up a little bit. So there's not much change. Okay. Next meeting? Let's Sounds good to me. Out. We'll store that in mind for a recommendation okay. at the next meeting. That okay. sounds good. And if you have any gut opinions yeah. of that amount with between you and you know, Shane. You know, and it might be, I don't know if you put it in conjunction with, okay, it, it's keeping the millage rate the same. You know, don't be... You know, with the taxable cool. value going up, you know, they might want to decrease the millage rates. That's a good point. I'll Whether pay, they go I'll there or... I'll pay my real estate taxes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Or is there... Let me just go back to the agenda and make sure I'm not... I just wanted to say, you know, this, you have Shane, a lot of credit for putting it. There's a lot of good information in this book, formatted. I know the detail one with the three ring binder is just detail and stuff, but there's, if you go on the table of contents, you know, we've got. That's super clear. Thanks for putting it Millage together. information, yeah. personnel, uh, it summarizes it. We've got, for the first time, I've got fund balance projections five year for every fund, if you go into those specific departments. And there is a page 65, which, summarizes the different funds, beginning balance, revenues, expenses, and then the projected ending balance. So a lot of good I information. I promise to this. study it by the next meeting. I'm, I, and then the back uh, is the capital improvement area, if you're looking for the capital projects. and So a lot of good information in this. Good stuff, Shane. Okay, let me just <laughs> check with the agenda, make sure we're hitting everything here. <laughs> No public comments, obviously. Staff comments? I think we've had enough. <laughs> Board comments? Anybody? Any last? Is there anything else you like or need for the next meeting? Or just, uh, I know it'll be the, the set departments and stuff, but. Are you guys good? So the next meeting is on the 16th at 2 o'clock. Yep. The remainder of the department, future agenda, yeah. Just 
you know, again, mull it over what you like to hear your ideas, what might be available for the reserves. It's not an official opinion, but I just, I don't want to, when I come up with a recommendation mm -hmm. that's like out in left field, I want it to be. I could give you some options. Push. Options would I want be it good. to be a push yeah, and going to the commission. Mm -hmm. I can do that. that I, I just think this is the time. Right. To be a little conservative and no, not conservative in terms of don't spend it all. You can you can squirrel some acorns away. Right. No, no, I, I appreciate your, your thoughts on this. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else? Going once, going twice. Let's adjourn the meeting at 4.14.